The first worksheet that you'll complete for major assignment three is the analysis worksheet. Here, you're going to evaluate the effects of tutoring on test scores. You'll have a set of before data, a set of after data, and you'll calculate some related statistics. As usual, you'll start by entering your name. In this case, in cell B10, you'll notice that scores are filled in for you at that point. In section two, you then calculate the difference in scores. Note that here you'll want to take the score after tutoring minus the score before tutoring. And you can either do this on a row by row basis, or you can work with a vector function starting in D14. Our difference column might look something like this. And notice that we've also formatted all of the values as number with two decimals. In 3A, we'll calculate statistics for before, after, and difference items. Here, and you'll see this in the resources as well, such as the PowerPoint, you'll use Excel functions to calculate each of the values in this section. For example, for the mean, you're going to use the average function. And you'll want to use the average of the values for the before items in column G, for the after items in column H, and for the difference for your formulas in column I. The before data is over here in column B. And so we can select that close our parentheses, press enter on your keyboard, and that fills in the value here. For the median, we use the median function. We use standard deviation or STDEV for the standard deviation. And the range is the maximum minus the minimum. In Excel, that's max minus min. So again, for the before statistics, we use these before scores in column B. For the after ones, we use the after scores in column C. And for the difference, we use the difference scores in column D. Note that we've also formatted all the values here as number with two decimals. Now, similarly, in the percentile, section number four, we're going to use the built-in function percentile to calculate the 17th and 64th percentile. That is to say the values at which 17% of the data is below it and 64% of the data is below it on the lower and upper limits there. And here again, we'll want to use number with two decimals as a format. The way to read these values is with our calculated values of 4.71 and 5.52, that 17% of the differences in scores are below 4.71, and 64% of the differences are below 5.52. Similarly, in 5A, we're going to take a look here at the empirical rule. Here, it'll make some sense for you to, again, take a look at the resources for some discussion of what you're calculating here. The basic idea is that 68% of the data from a normal distribution falls between the mean minus the standard deviation and the mean plus the standard deviation. 
So here, our lower bound of the 68% of difference in scores data is going to be the mean of the difference in scores minus the standard deviation of that difference. The upper bound is going to be the mean plus the standard deviation. And again, we're going to format this as a number with two decimals. Taking a look at our calculated values here of 2.75 and 6.62, the interpretation is that 68% of our differences lie in between the values of 2.75 and 6.62. This will again vary based on your name. You may find that it's higher the range, it's lower. It may include a value of zero. In any case, you'll want to use that calculated value to answer the question in 5b. And you've seen, again, something similar to this in topic 5, DQ1. Here, you'd like to make a statement about the effectiveness of tutoring on the test scores given what you just calculated. If we consider that the differences in column D represent the improvement, so they're the after minus before values, then a range of 2.75 to 6.62 indicates that at least for 68%, we've had that much improvement. In fact, the improvement is positive for even greater percentage of students uh, because the upper bound doesn't count improvement that went beyond that point. So we'll want to reflect that consideration in our answer in 5b. And in the answer, make sure that you actually reference your numeric bounds here. So in my answer, I would want to include 2.75 and 6.62 as actual values that I cite in my answer. And that concludes the analysis worksheet. We will move to the visualization worksheet next.